Warren here from Toy Fishing, bringing you the Monster Nut Shakedown. Hope you enjoy this trialing overview. In depth, packed with loads of features, this knot has got a lot going for it. Let's take a look. Me and my buddy Kevin were fishing down at the dock and uh, a good friend of ours, Howard's coming down. He's got his bicycle, he's got one of these milk crates stra strapped to the to the front. It's got these um, bungee cords on it. Anyway, he's down there, he's sitting on the bench, he's having a beer and we're busy catching, uh, I think we were catching these like chub and spots or whatever, fantastic day. And uh, Howard's like, guys, what are you doing? You know, you don't want to be throwing those back, put them straight in the crate, I'm good to go. So we're like, okay, one, two, three, four. So anyway, we're filling this crate and uh, it's half full and I'm like, dude, Howard, there's loads of fishing in our bell, I think he got enough. So Howard's on his bike, he's riding off the dock and this whole freaking crate like comes off, freaking bungee cords, fish. I mean, if you think pigeons are dirty, buddy, you haven't, I mean, these chub have got this all day long. There's so much fish poop. I mean, everywhere. It's over the freaking bicycle. Howard's like, I don't know, still under the bike or whatever. And we're like, oh my gosh, catastrophe. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we recovered from the situation. A couple of fish lost over the dock, but Howard was on his way, wasn't hurt. Let's check out the trialing knot. This is another example of a knot that has been established and used in the fishing arena for some time now. It's a derivative of the clinch knot and was designed in the early 1970s, as we mentioned before in our how-to video. So again, we have a knot that's been developed prior to the big, big braid push in the early 90s. It's another knot that has tried to solve the problem of the tag end either slipping or being rattled apart or being contained in any part of the knot. Okay, so let's check out what Jimmy's got under the hood for this knot. Placing the knot on the clinch knot is never going to be a bad thing. Firstly, any experienced fisherman can tie some form of the clinch knot. So if you want to make a knot with your company brand on it, you're off to a winner straight away. They already know how to tie two thirds of your knot. Good strategy actually. The main benefit to this knot, particularly if you're freshwater bass or fly fisherman, is the direction of the tag exiting at the rear of the knot. This should eliminate a lot of weed issues. Right, so referring directly from the Berkeley website and their YouTube video, they recommend this knot for monofilament and for fluorocarbon with a standard four or five turns. I also refer here to Lefty Cray and Mark Soson, the authors of Practical Fishing Knots, who recommend the knot for only up to 12 pound lines. So the point here is gonna follow on from the designer's comments and from the comments made by two knot legends who wrote a great old book on knots. Look, these guys and the manufacturers know the knot inside out. We should just follow on their recommendations. So this aside, I'm still going to unpack this knot as I'm hoping to teach you guys a major knot principle here. So there's this one principle I've not brought up yet in these videos and this is it. Dun, 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 twisting. <laughs> I should do a little disco dance there anyway. So it's a simple principle. If you twist something up, it's always going to want to return to its straight position and untwist. Unlike the clinch knot and the improved clinch with the clockwise tuck, which freely allow the knot to unwind and cinch down, the trialing knot and one of the improved clinch knot variants with the anti-clockwise tuck do not allow the knot to unwind freely and allow the wraps to bind uniformly under tension. So, in effect, you'll get the wraps nearer the standing end of the knot doing all the work. By putting the tag under the wrap on the hook eye or swivel, it'll prevent the knot from seating correctly 
and it will fail on thicker lines as the line is now twisted under tension and actually needs to release the stoppage. The ideal knot for a twisted concept knot is where the hook end of the knot and the tag end of the knot is all bound down. Secondly, when you initially tighten up the knot, it's all too easy for the tag to slip around the back of the hook eye when you tighten up and then the tag is wedged along its length under the wrap around the eyelet. Just check it's coming out the correct area. Thirdly, if you use this knot on braid, it will pull. That is a guarantee. You need to make sure you use it as it was designed for, mainly on monofilament and fluorocarbon. Tag end length is a must on this knot. If the tag is short and there is excess tugging by the fish or the monofilament stretching out due to the knot in a properly seated state, you will lose fish. Lastly, and this is the showstopper for me, when you start tightening this knot, you will notice the first thing to stop moving is the tag end. That's because the pressure being exerted on the standing end is initially being forced on the double wrap around the hook eye. Then you start tightening up even more. You're tightening the whole knot by trying to pull the standing end side of the knot through the entire knot. Well, that's not great. You need to be able to tighten both ends of the line to tighten the knot by forcing all the pressure mainly from one side. It's going to give many inconsistencies when tying this knot, leading to many varying knots being tied, especially if you start using thicker lines. Thinner lines won't show a problem at all and may not be affected at all. Again, as always, wet the knot. You need to make sure it's well lubricated so the knot can slide internally to allow it to tighten. So I hope you learned some stuff and enjoyed the content. Oh, and before I leave, I need to give our rating on this knot. I would certainly give this knot an eight and a half out of 10. It's a fantastic knot. Some of the comments might have been on the negative side, but when it comes down to it, this knot is a great knot for those thinner line types. So just like how it underestimating the strap strength and those things snapping off the handlebars, <laughs> much the same with this knot. It will fall short if you use it in the incorrect situation. So fluorocarbon monofilament, you're good to go, 30 pound or less. I would certainly put this knot in the library, you're good to go. Tag end length. Tag end. <laughs> okay, start again. <laughs> tag end length is a must on this knot. If the tag is short and there is excess tagging by the fish or the monofilament stretching out due to. <laughs> Don't do this at home. <laughs> this is. Uh, Tricky stuff, this twisting. <laughs> twisting. <laughs> twisting. <laughs> Let's go.